What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to score all kinds of different shed antlers the right way and the easy way. So I've already picked out three, your common ones you're probably gonna be measuring. We have a typical five point side. We have a typical four point side. That's a fun one to measure. And then just a very simple, non-typical five point side just to show you guys some abnormals. So to start off, we're gonna do the two easy ones, typicals. You're gonna need very, very simple things. You don't have to have a Pope and Young tape measure, but my brother's an official scorer, so we tend to have the official stuff. And today isn't gonna be exactly official, but it's gonna give you a very close reference. The next thing you're gonna need is some sort of cable, or if you're using a soft tape, just know that it's probably not the most accurate. We use the cable and then we measure, or we lay the cable down on the tape measure. I'll show you guys how that's gonna work. And then here, I've got a notepad and my pen. If you got somebody to write for you, it's even easier. But for the close up, you guys can see, I, can, I already wrote out a typical five point. He's gonna have a main beam measurement, a G1 measurement, a G2 measurement, G3, G4. And then he's gonna have a circumference and he's gonna have four of those. So C1, C2, C3, and C4. So that's already written out. Now I'm just gonna go through and measure them. So the first thing I'm gonna do, take my handy dandy tape measure here, and I find some masking tape makes this a heck of a lot easier because what I'm gonna do, I'm not actually measuring with this besides using the cable on the tape measure to measure that. So I am going to lay just a piece down of tape on the table so it holds my tape measure. And I don't think that deer's probably gonna have more than a 25 inch beam, but just in case, we're gonna go to like 28, 29 to give us some uh, extra room. All this is doing is making it so there's more hands free. I don't have to be holding different things and more consistency. So now that I've got that laid out, I'm gonna take my cable, like I showed you guys earlier. It does have a little gator clip, so you can mark it right on the end of your tine or whatever measurement you're doing in order to uh, be the most accurate you can. So your first measurement we're gonna do is a main beam measurement right here, okay? So it starts from the base back here. I'll show you guys, okay? So you wanna draw a line basically that goes from the center of the base all the way around and follows that same line. So he's gonna go from, if you follow these lines, which this one's a really easy representation because he has all of the different lines and contour lines and everything. If you follow these lines down, you gotta go to the center of where the burr ends, okay? So where the center of that burr ends, I'm gonna follow that right down there to that. And I'm gonna take this side because it hooks a little bit easier. And I'm simply gonna set it right on the edge of the burr. Now, if you have a big burr or something like that, you put it right on the edge of the burr. It should hook onto that a little bit. Okay, so now I'm just gonna simply use my thumb, just like that. And I'm gonna run this cable along, just like I said, along the edge of his main beam. And right, you wanna keep it in the center and follow his turn, his, the curve of his antler, all right? So right there, we're still on the center of his main beam. We're gonna keep going. All I'm doing is holding with one thumb and taking the next one and running it down his main beam, pinch it, then hold it again. Now I'm gonna run it a little bit further, same thing. And then the tricky part is once you get to the end, you wanna do a little bit smaller portions. But the point of this is right there, the main, main part about doing the main beam is you wanna stay in the center and you don't wanna go high, you don't wanna go low, you wanna stay right in the center of their antler. And so right there, I came out at the center of it, clipped my gator clip right there. Now, I have myself a measurement. Now I'm gonna take this, I'll put it right on the end, the number right at the zero. I'll show you guys why I'm clarifying that here in just a second. All right, so now I'm gonna go down and right on the edge of my gator clip, I know that on the inside of it, so this is where I started, right here is going to be my measurement, not on the outside, because that's the outside of the time, that doesn't count, okay? So right on the inside, and I'm gonna look, I'm at 22, and I'm actually at 15 sixteenths versus seven eighths. So like, I've got 22 and seven eighths, and it's right on the line for 15 sixteenths. 
So a little tip for you guys, don't use it exclusively or don't use it or take advantage of it. But if you're over an eighth and you get the 16th, the next 16th. So in this instance, I'm at seven eighths, 15 sixteenths is the next line. I've got the 15 sixteenths. It gets the, it gets the next the next eight basically. So instead of this being a 22 and seven eighths, it's gonna be a 23 inch main beam. So just to explain that really quickly, 22 and seven eighths is where this would fall if I shrunk, if I rounded to the nearest eight. But instead I got the 16th, I got the larger 16th. So that's gonna give me the next eight. So we're right at 23. So all I'm gonna do now, take my notebook I showed you guys earlier. I'm at 23 and zero eights. So I wrote that down, right? Now we get to the G1, these ones, are all similar the, G, the g1 which is your eye guard or your brow time wherever you're from it's going to be measured that's the only time that's going to be measured a little bit differently so you're going to see here right here you can follow your main beam down all right the whole goal here it's easier when you have somebody to hold it or if you're really officially scoring it you should put a piece of tape here and then you can make a mark to where your line is coming from but for simple sake, I'm just gonna show you guys as best I can. So basically what you wanna do is you're gonna measure from where there is a line that goes from where no swelling is basically. So what that means is you see up here with my left hand, I am pinching it, this wire down on the top of the main beam. There's no swelling right here, okay? You can see how the tine comes down and it starts to swell out like that. You wanna get out of that. So I'm just, outside of the swelling, I'm gonna do the same thing. There's swelling here. It ends about right in here, okay? From where the tine is. So now you can see this draws a perfect line. Now center, just like we did with the main beam, we're gonna go right here and we're gonna measure from there to the tip of his main beam, or excuse me, of his eye guard, all right? So I'm gonna remember that. This is where if you had a piece of tape there, you could mark it with a pencil or something and know where you're measuring from. But like I said, for this one, I know it's right on this little notch. So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna pinch it down. Now I'm holding it in place, okay? Now, just like the main beam, you're simply gonna follow your contour up, okay? Right in the center of his eye guard. So for instance, you see right here, he kind of swivels back and forth. We're not necessarily gonna go out and swivel back and forth. We're just gonna keep following that center line right there and holding this up in the air for you guys to see makes it a little bit more difficult but so right there we're close again we're right on the edge but now i'm going to take this gator clip i'm going to run that wire right along the center and clip it so right there we've got our next measurement for our g1 our eye guard now this is why I'm saying the tines are a little bit different. The tines are all gonna be measured the same way except for the eye guard because you actually get to take your eye guard. So we just measured that from the back, right? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take what would be similar on the opposite side where the swelling stops. And this just has to be close because you're gonna get to take whatever one is larger. So I already measured the back. All I'm gonna do is keep this pinch down about where that swelling is going to end and I'm just going to look so you see right there how the back is actually longer than what the front is my mark is further out that means that the measurement is longer okay that means that his eye guard is longer from the back as it than it is from the front so you get to take the longer measurement on that one all right so we're going to keep that we're going to measure it this is why I said that on the main beam I went from one and went on my main or went on my measurements because when I have this tape down on tines, it's much easier for me to go from 10 and just go to the next number. So it's basically going from zero as well. So right here, we're at five and one eighth for his G1. Five and one eighth. Okay, now we can kind of start cruising. This is gonna be much easier now. So we've got our first tine right here. You're gonna measure from the outside of the main beam, okay? Same rule though as what I just explained to you guys. So we have swelling right here. This tine comes down, it swells into the main beam, same on this side. So now we have to find where the swelling ends. So on this side, it's gonna be right about in here. So I'm gonna take my wire here, pinch it down, okay? Now I'm gonna follow the line of the main beam just like this. 
and we'll see where the end of this swelling is. Right about in there, okay? So now I know my measurement is gonna go from the, where the center of this tine comes down, like this, to where my wire meets it. So right there is where my mark is. And I have seen guys, and we've actually done it too, you can just take a pencil and lightly mark on your antler and it'll wipe right off. But when you're just trying to score a couple antlers, you just wanna do it pretty accurate or just know at least what you're doing or what you're looking at, this is a great way to do it the simpler way or the little bit easier way. So I'm following that center line just like I've done on all the other ones, right to the tip. I'm gonna pinch that off right there. So this is our G2 measurement and it is going to be 10 and 3 eighths. Okay, write that one down. Now G3, same thing right here. Got the main beam where it stops swelling from this one and this one. So you got, kind of got a little dip right here. We're gonna put our wire right there. Right here, we're gonna do the same thing in between these two tines where the swelling ends, which is gonna be right about in here. And I like to put my wire between the, the tines. So it gives me a little bit better of a representation. So right there, as you guys can see, our measurement's gonna be right from what would tech, if you're gonna mark one side or the other of your wire, just know that when you put your wire down like this, the mark goes on the bottom side of the wire because you're sitting, resting it on top of the main beam. So it sits right, at, your mark is gonna be right on the bottom right there. But like we've been doing, like I said, I know where that is. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna start it right there and pinch it just like that. And I'm gonna run this antler or run this wire right up like so. That's a heck of a G3 right there. I know, I wanna say Warren has measured this one before. I think we have the score on it somewhere, but. Pinch it off right there with our clip. Now we are sitting at right at 10 and four, yep, 10 and four eighths. So actually just only an eight inch longer than this puppy. You can see how this one sits way lower on the main beam. All right, so now we're gonna do our G4. Last one of our tine measurements. Same thing as I'll show you guys. Now it gets a little different because the main beam starts coming out and it's gonna start getting smaller anyways, but you can still see where the swelling ends. You gotta kind of imagine it. I mean, that's why there's a little bit of discrepancy in what scores are, even with official scoring. It's very close, but it kind of de depends on the score you're working with. So right here, I'm gonna go with right in there. And we're gonna go same thing over here, right about there, draw our line. There's actually a mark of indent on him that you guys probably can't see, but I'll use that. Pinch it down, measure up. Just like so. I'm going to pinch this off. Right there at the tip. We are sitting right at seven and one. So seven and one eight. So that is all of our tine measurements. That is it for that one, except for we got to do circumference now. So if you are doing this more officially, there's actually two tapes that you could use for your mass measurements. But for the sake of this, I only have the one. I have the regular tape measure, not the mass or the circumference tape measure, but you can still use the same one. It works the same way. So I'll show you guys how you do this here. So your first mass measurement is gonna go right along, right in the base, okay? Or right in between your eye guard and your base, okay? The next one's gonna be right here. Your third one's gonna be in between your G2 and your G3. And then your fourth one's gonna be in between your G3 and your G4. This is a five point side. So we'll go over the four point here in a little bit. Now, a little, tip for you're not a tip for you guys what a lot of guys don't realize is when you are measuring your circumference or your mass measurement okay 
you do not get the largest mass measurement in whatever circumference you're doing. You actually should take multiple measurements and you're going to see which one is the smallest in that area. And whatever the smallest one is, is what you're gonna get, all right? So right here, I'm just simply wrapping my tape around here, okay? And I'm gonna use one as the reference mark. The reason the mass measurement uh, tape measures a little easier is because it gives you about an inch or two inch gap to where zero starts and you can go right off your zero. I know it sounds a little complicated, but from here we're gonna use the one, and that means I've gotta subtract a, a one inch off of whatever my end is. So right here we're looking at, I've got four and four eighths, I've got four and three eighths, and four and five eighths. So on this one, it's gonna be four and three eighths, because you gotta go with the smallest, okay? So C1 is gonna be four, and three eighths. Next one is right up in here. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna measure multiple different spots and you're gonna see what is the smallest circumference. So just to start off right here, we've got four and two eighths. We've got four and two eighths. And then we've got four and one eighth. So right there, we know four and one eighth is the smallest. Do that. I know this video is gonna get a little bit long for you guys, but for any of you that are trying to learn how to score your own deer or anybody that is just like, hey, I've got a couple good sheds, I wanna go score them quick. This is a great video to save for you to have reference of, you could pause, go back, watch again, do whatever you need to do. Message us with questions, whatever you got. So next one is gonna be, we got four and three eighths, we've got four and five eighths right there. So you gotta go with four and three eighths. And our last one, right here, we've got, man, he holds his mass really well. He's got four and three eighths, four and three eighths, four and two eighths. So four and two eighths. All right. That is how you score a five point typical side. If you guys want to comment before you see the end of this, what do you think the five point side scored? And we'll add it up real quick. This is pretty simple. There's calculators on your phone, but just for anybody that is watching or wanting to know the easiest way, or I think the easiest way, I go through, do my big numbers. So I've got 23, five, 10, 10, seven, four, 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 four. I'm gonna add all those up, and then I'm gonna go through and do my eights and add them together. So I'm gonna take 23, plus five, plus 10, plus 10, plus seven, plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four. 71, all right? So now I'm gonna write down 71. And remember, that's just your whole number. So now I'm gonna go through and do my eights real quick. So I've got one plus three plus four plus one plus three, plus one, plus three, plus two. That's 18, so now I have 71 and 18 eights. So back to math class, kids. If you reduce this fraction, that's gonna be two and two eights. So now we have two inches that we got out of our eights, so it's gonna be 73. We have two eights left over. So you got a 73 inch, or 73 and two eights inch shed. And for anybody asking, you do not reduce the eights. I know that can be reduced further, but antlers and in, in all of your official measurements are always scored in eights, even if it's an even one that you could reduce. No quarters, no sixteenths, none of that. It is, or decimals, it is eights. That's it. Very simple. All right, so that one, 73 and two eighths. Back of the shed, but that is a five point side, okay?